Good afternoon everybody and welcome to another edition of Julia's Novelty Bloomers. I'm still on the theme of death, right? You get to a certain age, don't you, and death starts following you around. You know, like the Grim Reaper is kind of sharpening his scythe and kind of pulling up his hoodie and checking his iPhone. Yeah. And I'm being followed on Twitter by numerous undertakers and companies selling life insurance. It's actually not reassuring, really. But I guess I've always been a bit of a death head, I suppose, because um, when I was younger, um, my gran and my mother and I used to play this game. And it was called Catch, nice, simple, innocent childhood game, you think. But this one, ooh, this one was darker. It was. It was, if you drop the ball the first time, you're feeling a little bit ill. If you drop it a second time, you are hospitalised. And if you drop it a third time, you're dead. I mean, that's child abuse, isn't it? Yeah. It used to terrify the life out of me. I used to lie awake at night in bed if I dropped the ball three times and I would be wondering what I was going to die of. You know, what mysterious disease I was going to die of. Um, and, you know, I think that's probably set in motion a kind of morbid sensibility that I subsequently cultivated. And Cindy dolls, for example, this morbid sensibility expressed itself through my Cindy dolls because other little girls, you know the nice little girls with the pigtails that were all sort of neat and well behaved, I was not one of those, no. And other nice little girls had sporty Cindy and super motivated Cindy, which is sort of like sporty Cindy, only without the tracksuit. I, on the other hand, had suicidal Cindy. Mm. I didn't bother dressing her. She'd stayed in her negligee all the time. Well, it was the 70s, you know, it was a nylon negligee. Oh, you would be suicidal, wouldn't you, having to wear that all the time? But yes, um, and then Cindy, suicidal Cindy, hanged herself from the chain on the toilet flush. I was the one to find her. Yeah, sad, isn't it? And then I had this womble, because I was really into the wombles. I, I preferred them to humans. Um, I still do, really. Um, and I had this Womble, it was Wellington Womble. I don't know how many people remember having a Womble, right? Um, and my Wellington Womble went everywhere with me, you know. I just couldn't, I couldn't, you know, I really had sort of attachment issues to my Wellington Womble, you know. You know, I once tried to glue him to my cardigan so I could take him to school, but my mum just removed my cardigan, so. But yes, this uh, Wellington Womble, right? And I really did, I thought it was marvellous. And you had this little cord that you pulled, right? So he'd say things. And he'd say things like, um, go and pick up some litter and put it in the bin. Or he would say, you're looking a bit sad today, Julia. Do you want to talk about it? Or he would say, I know, Julia, life's hard when you've got a dodgy haircut and no friends, but I'm your wumbling friend. Or my favourite one was he would just say, I am your very best wumbling friend. And I used to keep pulling the cord and to try to get that message. I just wanted someone to say that they were my friend. How sad is that? Um, that's what you get for being the local weirdo. Anyway, and then I decided, I was about 11 and I decided that my, my Womble, my Wellington Womble had died. Um, and he died of cancer. And this is no joke, I'm not um, making, I hope, um, unsavoury jokes about cancer, which is an awful disease, but I was a child and I was exploring, I guess, ideas about death through my womble. And so I decided, I sort of, I sort of like used um, my mum's nail scissors to cut off bits of his fur because I kind of decided that the chemo was making it fall out. Um, and so I decided he died. And of course then we had to bury him because we had to have a proper funeral service. So my mother read from the Bible, you know, I am the resurrection and the life and he who believes in me shall never die. And we buried the Womble in the garden. Yeah. Um, and 
it was only much later that I realised I could have kept his voice box, couldn't I? And then Wellington Womble could continue to communicate with me from beyond the grave. So I said to my mother, I said, please, please, can we exhume Wellington Womble? And she said, no, Julia, I'm not having all that mud all over the carpet, no. And there it is. And then sometime after that, Dad built a patio over the top of him. And that was the end of Wellington Womble. Thank you for listening to another edition of Julia's Novelty Bloomers. Catch you later.